We've got a computer here that's having some issues and we're going to try to figure out what's wrong with it and see if we can get it going. Uh, apparently from what I hear as uh, you turn it on and it shuts right off. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to verify that. As soon as we get some power to it here. And this thing is in a giant, giant Cooler Master half case. Uh, back, back from a time when, you know, these big giant cases were the thing. Oh yeah, it does. It shuts right off. All right. Oh, that looks like, yeah, it looks like it's just power cycling on and off. Um, all right, let's get the power on the plug from it. And uh, I guess let yeah let everything drain out there. Um, I think what we're gonna do is uh, first thing that we're gonna do is just unplug peripherals on here. Although I doubt that this is gonna have much effect. Um, Alright, let's go ahead and see what happens. Okay. So yeah, that had no effect. Alright, let's pull the graphics card out. Easier said than done on this one. I got a sound card in here too that can come out. I haven't seen a sound card installed in anything in a while. appears to have the lever missing disengage this so actually the lever's not even there to engage it what do we got here 280 or 9800 GX2 all right let's see what happens now Okay, get the same thing. All right, so now I think we're gonna try swapping it with a known good power supply, which at this point, I don't think that's gonna help either. It's really looking like a motherboard issue. All right, so we've got a known good power supply plugged in here. And absolutely no difference. So the fact that it's power cycling like that does lead me to believe that this is without a doubt a motherboard issue. I mean, it could be CPU, but it acts more like like uh, something's wrong with the motherboard. So at this point, I think we're gonna pull the motherboard out for a little more testing.
motherboard just sitting out on a bench with a uh, no good power supply. No peripherals are installed whatsoever, so we're going to give this a try again. Okay, still doing the same thing. I'm narrowing it down here. There's not a whole lot left. Wait for the power to bleed off. Let's pop out the RAM. I got some really nice uh, ballistics tracer RAM on there. It looks really cool when they, it's not RGB, but they look really cool when the LEDs start lighting up. difference yeah not at all. all right as soon as our power bleeds out here we'll pop the CPU which I mean I guess it's a slight possibility it could be the CPU especially since you know it's thermal paste on here is like extremely old you can see it's just dry and crumbly you know, you can see it's dry and crumbly. So, I doubt it, but, you know, it's worth a shot. Now, if it, without a CPU, um, if, that, if that's not what's shorted out, or if that's what was shorted out, uh, you know, you'll probably see this come up and just start flashing or whatever. It shouldn't power cycle the same way. So, let's find out. All right, and we still have absolutely no change whatsoever. Yeah, it's still power cycling. All right, just a quick overview of what we were working with here. Anyways, this is a uh, gigabyte motherboard. This is a high-end gigabyte board, uh, GA EX58 UD5. Um, it's got you know nice heat sinks on the, on the VRM MOSFETs and uh, Northbridge and Southbridge got nice heat sinks on them. Uh, plenty of SATA ports on it. Um, three banks of RAM. And I mean, it's just a nice, nice board. Obviously, something went wrong with it. We'll see if we can figure out what. Uh, this did have installed a uh, first gen i7. Um, if you see it on there, Core i7 920. And a buttload of uh, this ballistics tracer DDR3. Thirteen thirty-three megahertz RAM, so not the fastest, but still pretty decent. All right, so as you see, I took off all the all the heat sinks on here. Uh, same reason with the CPU. You can see the paste that's on there is is I mean it's hard on there. The the pads still look good. They feel nice and soft yet, but the all right, you can see the thermal paste on here is still, I mean, it's really hard and crunchy, so that's going to have to be replaced. Um, the thermal pads themselves still feel nice and soft. But, you know, as I got those off, I checked everything, everything looked good. So I went through and uh, popped the battery out here and um, held in the, the CMOS button again. So I just got it plugged back in, and I don't think this is going to make much difference, but we're going to find out. Okay, so obviously something is not quite right with this board. Okay, we've got a little bit of good news. Um, by popping out the CMOS battery and then holding in the uh, CMOS clear button, uh, we were able to get it to this point here. Um, it hangs up at 69, so we've got an error code that we can look up. And uh, you can see it starts to read the RAM, but we get no display on the screen. So we're going to go through and we're going to uh, look into this a little bit further and see if maybe it's a corrupt BIOS issue.
And there we go. Got a post error, but uh, I think we can deal with that now. At least we've got it turned on. And actually somewhat working. Alright, as you can see, everything's working perfectly on here now. We're on our screen here, we can get right to the BIOS. Which means that we should be able to put this back together and uh, everything should just work now. Uh, what we had to do was, uh, this was, this one was a tough one. I pulled the CMOS battery out and there's a uh, button back here for clearing the CMOS. And um, I had to actually put power to the, to the board. I had to pull this uh, battery out and then uh, hold that button in a few times. And I got it to where it would come up to, you know, a couple different errors on here it would hang up on. And uh, eventually it must have, because uh, this has a dual BIOS on it. You can see right there is two BIOS chips. And it must have gotten to the point where it uh, actually backed up the original BIOS because one of those is a backup BIOS in case you, you screw up your main one. And uh, for some reason it wasn't backing it up and then we had to kind of play around and force it through. But we got it now, so we're going to put this back together and, and uh, make sure everything works on it.
it out. Turns out it wasn't a bad motherboard. Uh, once we got the motherboard out, we are able to check everything out really good. Um, realized that the BIOS was uh, corrupt on it, so we got the BIOS to, to it's a dual BIOS fortunately, so we, got, we were able to uh, restore the original BIOS on it. And as you see, it's running Windows now. Everything's all back together. We cleaned it out. There's a ton of dust in here. The power supply, the back of this had a ton of dust on it. Uh, we pulled these heat sinks off and um, and replaced the thermal uh, the thermal paste on the north bridge here. And we also got new thermal paste underneath the AIO because those were both uh, they looked like the original paste on on the AIO that that came with it. And uh, of course, that's the original paste on the heat sink there. So um, the thermal pads look good that one on the MOSFETs here, but that was uh, pretty bad thermal paste on there, so we had the thermal paste on there, thermal paste on there, and everything's running, uh, running well too.